Hello everybody, I'm Nick and I'm going to explain exactly what Span is in C Sharp and how it works and I'm going to explain to you how you can use it in your application as well today without having to make any drastic changes. There's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of things you can do right but also wrong if you use the feature. So I want to clear that up in this video and make sure you leave this video understanding exactly what it is how it works and how you can use it. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and this notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's see what I have here. First, I have a simple program.cs and it has a date as a text. And this is just a random format. It goes by uh, day, month, and then year. And then here I have a method which is supposed to pass this text and then get the day, the month and the year and return it as integers. Now let's see how you would normally do that in C Sharp right now in your code. There's many ways to do that. You might want to split on the uh, space or you might want to get offset because currently uh, it's always going to be like two in the beginning. So zero and something or like 21, 22 and same for the month and then the year is the rest. So what you can do right now, if you want to, is something like this. You can say day as text, for example, and then you can say date as text dot substring, and you can say start from zero and get two. And this doesn't work because this needs to be static, that's fine. So if I change it to static, this will give you uh, the first two characters, which is the day. And then you can do the same thing for the rest. So you can say month as text, equals date substring and then you get from the third and length two and in the end you say year as text equals date as text dot substring and then you get from the six character onwards because this can be like a any year and then if you do that you can convert them with the int dot parse method to integers so it will look like this and then all you need to do is change that and now here you have it if i run this piece of code it will print back 8, 7, and 2021, which is this date passed as integers. Now, here's where we have a problem. You see these substrings here? Well, strings in C Sharp are immutable, and they're immutable reference types, meaning that if I am to debug this, let's see how this looks on the memory level. I'm going to load the memory here on Rider, and you can see all the things are located on the heap. And if I press um, to step over, these three values and I load memory again, you can see we have four new strings allocated. And if I show you what those strings are here, you can see that they are the eight, the seven and the 2021 20, that was substringed out of that main string. So those are allocations on the heap. Those are the expensive ones because the garbage collector will have to actually find them when they get dereferenced where when we're outside of this method, for example, and they no longer have something pointing at them and it's going to have to pause your application, trigger garbage collection, and remove them. And that's expensive on, on your CPU. So how can we prevent that? Well, here's where span comes in. And span actually is perfect for that sort of string manipulation. So let's take the same method over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say date with string and span instead. And what I'm going to change is I'm going to say read only span here and read only span is a version of span which is read only and i say char and you have the date as a span now and you can implicitly convert to that so all you need to do is do this and now we can use this span here here and here and we can use the slice method very similar to the substring i'm going to explain exactly how this slicing works just give me a second but i just want you to see in the beginning that i can change that to that and execute this and we have the same result. However, there's a major change and let's see that major change now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a benchmark class and I'm going to put those um, those methods in that class. So I'm going to say benchy here and then I'm going to take those two, put them here. I'm going to take this one as well and put it here and I'm going to add benchmark.net which is the package that will allow us to run benchmarks on those two operations. And all I need to do is remove this from being static and this, and then add a benchmark header attribute and another attribute here. And then I want the memory diagnoser to see how much memory is being allocated here. And I'll explain why this memory thing is 
very interesting once we get the results back. So all I need to do is say benchmark runner dot run and provide the class. And then I have to change this into release mode and execute it. And this will now execute both the, the substring method and the slice method. And we're going to get results on how fast they are and how much memory they allocate. The two things that we care about. Now I have to warn you, if you have played with span a little bit in the past, maybe when it came out in .NET Core 2.1, I think, um, there's a lot of optimizations that went into the, the speed of other operations as well. So things historically like substring used to be slower, significantly slower when they were pitted against span. .NET now 5 has been optimized quite a bit, so you won't see insane speed optimizations, but that's not really what we're looking after when using span. So let's see the results are back. And as you can see, uh, using substring is 51 nanoseconds and using the span and the slice is uh, 32 nanoseconds. So both are very small, right? And yes, you can say that it's almost half, maybe 75% um, more expensive to go with the substring, but this is nowhere near as important as this memory allocation. Span is all about memory. Span, and the reason why it acts as an array effectively, because, you know, you can iterate um, on this character as if it was an array, is that it's an arbitrary piece of memory that is guaranteed to always be on the stack, meaning it can't be allocated physically on the managed heap, which is the thing where Gabby's collection kicks in, collects, and that's the expensive part because as Gabby's collection is running, your application is not running. Um, and maybe me explaining it that way doesn't really explain the actual benefit or feature or how it works. So let's go to the drawing board and see exactly how this works. So here I have the, the stack and the heap, the two places where we can actually allocate memory. The heap is the expensive one where we actually have the garbage collector picking up any dangling bits, any dangling things that don't have references pointing to them, while the stack only lives within the stack frame and it's getting automatically disposed the moment you're outside of that frame. So in that case where we were before, this is what will actually happen. We will want to have some text in this scenario, the text is the the date. So let's say something like this. And now this is a string. So in our scenario, it's a static read-only thing. So it will get treated a bit differently. But imagine that this is runtime, for example. And you have something like this. We want to create this string. And this will have an address. Now the actual address is way longer. But imagine that this is a shorter version of that address. And now what we're going to do in order to refer to that string, in order to use it on the stack, is we're going to store the address and then we're going to have a pointer to it. Now, if I do substring, what's going to happen is I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have 08 here. So the first approach where I showed you, then 07 here and 2021 20, here. And all of these will be separate allocations because strings in C-sharp are immutable and you cannot change the value of a string. Uh, three and zero. So all different addresses. And these will be stored on the stack and you're going to have to point at them. And the way it works is something like this. This should be actually four. Cool. Now, the problem with this is you're allocating basically double the memory on the heap. And the moment this goes out of scope and it no longer has references re uh, pointing at them, then those things will stay there allocated and something eventually will need to come in and garbage collected. And that's expensive. We don't want that. Now, if we go back to the initial thing where we just have the string allocated, the one we need, here's what would happen if you had a span. The span will store the address of the string it needs to deal with and then it will also store an offset let's say if in this scenario we we have a zero and a two which is offset and length so we start from zero and um read all the way up to two then what it will do is it will store zero basically here and then in the next address here it will store the length so all it needs to do now in order to use this immutable string is 
get the address of the string to know where it lives in the memory, and then get an offset to know which part it needs to read. So this thing will point at this. And we didn't need to allocate any extra memory. And it's the same with all the other things. If I need to read, for example, the month, all I need to store, again, on the stack, this is all stack allocation, is the address of the original string plus the offset, which in our scenario here, as you can see, is three, and then two is the length. So I can go back here and say three for the offset, two for the length. So this span now points here. And it's the same for the year. You get the original address and an offset, and then you get the length. And this is how span will work. So it's a very simple in concept thing. And I think when you visualize it this way, it's way easier to understand. But this is why it is so memory efficient, because it only deals with existingly allocated memory, not with memory that it needs to allocate to make those manipulations. And it's great, in my opinion, for things like this, where you have some string, you need to do some slicing or some parsing of it, and you can go character by character in a loop fashion, and you can say, is character upper or is lower, and you can do tons of things. It's way more limited as an API from what you'd normally have on string, but that's understandable due to how it works behind the scenes. When you can make benefit of it, it's just a free allocation heaven you can deal with. Now, you might have heard me saying that a couple of times by now, but spans cannot be allocated on the heap. And the reason for that is because spans are ref structs and ref structs cannot be created on the heap. For example, if I try to make that thing here, uh, it just won't allow me because as you can see, it gives you a kind of very technical explanation. But, but basically, because a, a value type on the class level is effectively going to be allocated on the heap alongside its parent when this is instantiated, you cannot allocate it here. The compiler just won't let you, it won't happen. And this comes with other drawbacks as well. It can't implement interfaces. It can't be used on iterators or async, and it can't be boxed. I mean, that's kind of a benefit, but it also is a drawback on what you can do with it. So its usage is more limited and more specific, but if you can use it, please do. Now, this is where it becomes more interesting. Let me just take this up here and put it in main so we can show you what, what I mean. We can copy that. And let's say all I want to do now is return the year from that original big string as a text. So year as text, right? So you still get as a span. You only grab the year and then you return it. So I can simply say, return year as text to string. And if I do that, let me just copy that out and say console.writeline uh, year, this needs to be static. And now I can say year as text, right? So if I do that, what do you get back? I get 2021. Great. However, this is one of the things I see wrong quite a bit. If you go through the trouble to actually use a string and then turn it into a, a span, if you return back a string from the span, then you're just losing all the benefit because you are still going to allocate that memory. There is no point in, in going about it with a slice if you're going to just return the text. So ideally, you want to leave it up to the consumer of the method to decide whether for them it's worth maybe two stringing it and converting it to a string or using it as a span. And this is where returning the span actually makes more sense. And now the user, if they want to visualize it, sure, they can do to string. And if I run this, they get the same result. But if what they want to do is get it and only get the, let's say, 21 to represent the decade, then they could in return do slice from two and get the two uh, last things and only return 21. And for them, they only allocated the two bytes for the string out of the four that the span contained. So you make it way more flexible for them to write better code by returning something that is more efficient. Again, this is more specific to what you're doing. And I'm not saying you should go everywhere and just return read only spans. But if you know that what you're building will be used by someone and it makes sense for them to do further work with this thing you're returning, 
maybe returning a span instead of returning the actual value or the actual reference uh, type might be better for them. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.